So James, uh, given what we've heard today, would you say this is a dramatic policy change or simply a foreign minister once again trying to make all the right noises? I think what you see here is an attempt to reset the agenda for the British foreign policy moving forward for the next five years. Uh, it's interesting to put this into context. Uh, when Tony Blair came to office, uh, one might remember in 97, Robin Cook stepped forward and gave a, a comparable speech in which he talked about putting an ethical foreign policy at the centre of uh, US uh, foreign affairs. What we see here in contrast is a much more pragmatic, uh, focused attempt, I think, to try to say, right, this is the world we live in. We've got economic uh, constraints. We've got a whole new world we've got to deal with. In many ways, I think you could say this is the start of a British foreign policy for a 21st century. To what extent, though, is he right that the UK has lagged behind in developing these uh, relationships with emerging economies? I mean, he mentioned today Brazil and India, China, of course, of course as well. Has Britain lagged behind? Presumably, no government is going to let those sort of relations uh, deteriorate, are they? Because economically, they're very important to the UK. They are. But one of the problems I think we've faced is, historically, we've got an almost uh, a problem looking back at a number of countries that we've had em empirical uh, relationships with the way we've had empire, so India, Pakistan got a lot of mentions. I think we've struggled to know quite how to deal with those in the past. And for the last 13 years, I think the Blair-Brown administration have been overly embarrassed about our imperial past and have tried to deal with them in a certain way. And I think what you see now is the new administration saying, right, fair enough, we've got to draw a line in the sand. Yes, we had an imperial uh, domina right. domain over there. We've got to move beyond that. We can't escape that. The economies of the world are moving southerly and easterly. It's in Britain's national interest now to get beyond that and deal with these people in a constructive fashion. Well, how big a voice does the UK have in the 21st century? Without sounding harsh, does the UK actually only really count when it's partnering up with its big ally, the US. I mean, that's what a lot of people think, isn't it? It is, and what was interesting, I think, today about the speech that William Hague gave was the almost complete absence of the United States from that message. Mm -hmm. This is the first in a series of four speeches that he'll be giving. Uh, interestingly enough, trying to reposition the United Kingdom uh, and its role in the world away from just being America's ally. Just say, look, we've got a historical role, we've got a diplomatic role, an intelligence role, and a cultural role to play in the world. And it's about time Britain stood up and started playing its, uh, playing its rate in the rest of the world. All right, James Boyce, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Mr.